Praise God. I don't know about you, but I already had church. <laughs> Worship team was great. That word was great, Pastor Annette. Um, now, I can tell that most of us have been reading our Bible this week, right? <laughs> if you missed out on last week's message, it's all online. Um, <laughs> so you can go back to it anytime you want. Um, <laughs> No, but seriously, uh, Carter did not warn me that the camera adds 10 pounds, so thanks, Carter. Uh, I'm gonna, gonna have to start hitting the gym. <laughs> um, welcome. Uh, I'm ready for today's word. Last week, I, I don't know how much of my notes I used, so I'm, I'm ready for what God has to speak today through me. Um, but before we get started, amen. <laughs> before we get started, uh, I want to address our online, um, our online church, our online community. Um, I am so happy that you join us every Sunday, every Wednesday. And if you are within traveling distance, I highly encourage you to join us in person. Um, it's awesome. I, I love our church. I love when we all get up and, and greet each other, and uh, we almost kind of have to uh, sneak in there and, and stop it from, from, from going too long. We love our fellowship. We love our church. Um, so it's, it's an awesome part that you would get to enjoy if you join us. Um, so if you're within traveling distance, we're from out of state. Not that far, but we're from out of state. So we, dri we drive out here every, every Sunday, every Wednesday. Um, so I encourage you guys to, to join us. Um, not that I have anything against uh, joining us online. I, I love technology. A lot of people would, would think, uh, they hear me talk and they, they would think I hate social media or I hate uh, technology. I don't, I really like it, it's an awesome tool. Um, but it can kind of create this, this, this placebo effect, makes you feel like you're part of a community, makes you feel like you're part of something. Um, and you are a part of our church, um, but you get to miss out on all the great things of a handshake, a hug. You, you get to miss out on that eye contact that, that you have with other people. And it's an, it's, it's an, an it's, it, it's, excuse me, it's an essential part of uh, being part of a church. So just, just keep in mind, you, it's pretty simple. You can go to Genesis chapter 1 and you, you can start reading from creation. It says, God created light and he saw that it was good. Land and seas, he saw that it was good. Vegetation, plants, trees, he saw that it was good. Sun and the moon, he saw that it was good. Fish and birds, and he saw that it was good. Wild animals, livestock, and small animals, he saw that it was good. The only thing in creation that he saw that was not good was man being alone. So if, if you still feel like there is a void or there, there's something missing while you're joining us online and you're catching the daily encouragements, that's all awesome, but find a church. If you're from out of state, if, you're, if you can't make it to this church, find a church that helps you grow. So I, I just encourage that. And with that being said, we'll, we'll go ahead and get started with the word today. Um, we'll go to Philippians chapter 1 verses uh, 12 through 14. I'll give, I'll give everyone a second to find it. Give our, our, our media crew a chance to find it as well. Our media crew does a great job. <laughs> Perfect shot. All right. Well, if you haven't found it on your Bible, you can look up on the screens. Word of God says, and I want you to know, my dear brothers and sisters, that everything that has happened to me here has helped to spread the good news. For everyone here, including the whole palace guard, knows that I am in chains because of Christ. And because of my imprisonment, most of the believers have gained confidence and boldly speak God's message without fear. Now, I want to focus a little bit more on, on verse 14 where it says, because of Paul's imprisonment, most believers gain boldness and confidence to preach the message with no fear. Now, it kind of reminds me of a time we had here in church a couple years ago when um, 
I, 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 don't, I don't really know what happened, but a lot of churches were shutting down. A lot of, a lot of places were getting, were getting closed. Um, and I just remember we, we didn't allow that to close our doors. We were out here in the parking lot. I remember I was part of the worship team. I'm still part of the worship team, worship team. But we were out here. We would get here extra early just to set up all the equipment outside. We would stay after to pick up all the equipment. We would take the drum set and everything out there. And it was awesome. It was great. But it was a time when the church was being silenced. It was a time when the church was being kind of set to the side and, and, and kind of pressured to not speak the word of God. And it reminds me of this here. Paul was imprisoned. And it says even the palace guard knew that he was imprisoned for sharing the good news. Now, a lot of churches didn't really pass a test, and that's really sad to see, but a lot of churches experienced revival. And... I was really excited to see. Go, I, I would go on. I, I would go online. I still used Facebook that, back then and stuff like that. I'm not on any social media right now, but I would go on there and I would see so many churches getting creative. I, I saw some pastors going on the roof of their church, and the congregation was just in the parking lot, and uh, you could really see how so many churches, so many people were they gained this boldness and this confidence to preach God's word. And one of the reasons is because during times of chaos and confusion, people seek answers. During times of chaos and confusion, people seek the truth. Now, the, the, the truth is written in this book right here. And we as a church have to know what's written here so that we can share those good news to people that are in chaos and confusion people that are living in fear, people that are living in, in, in anxiety. We have to know our word. We, we have to know the word of God so that we can preach to those people that are in need. Now, during those times, I remember people a lot, almost in a sense, um, our church and many other churches grew. Uh, our online ministry grew. And praise God for that. So, when you preach the truth and when you stick to what the word of God says, when you hold on to the word, God does amazing things. God starts to move in the congregation and you start to expand. You have this expansion. So the opposite happens when you don't take a hold of the word of God. When you're called, you won't be ready. When you're, when you're tested, you won't have a strong foundation. You won't know where to go because you don't have that strong foundation. You don't have a foundation in the word of God. Now, I've shared this before um, last week. I, I shared a little bit about it. Um, but for those who don't know, I grew up in Mexico my entire life because my dad was a, was a pastor, um, pastored a church in Mexico before he passed away in 2014. Um, and... Being, being, growing up in Mexico, which is a predominantly Catholic country, um, being the only Christian kid in school was not very easy. Um, there was, there was also, there was always, we don't experience it here, so a lot of times we're kind of uh, unaware of what happens in other places, but um, the, the verbal uh, insults and stuff like that, um, for simply for being a Christian um, and being little, not knowing how to defend myself. Um, but I grew up in that environment where it was, it was almost frowned upon if you didn't believe the same thing everyone else did. And it didn't just stop there. We, I, was, I grew up in a very small town, so we had recess, and I dreaded recess because... Kids would go as far as to throwing rocks at me. Um, it got to a point where uh, my dad had to come and talk to the, to the teachers because they were threatening to crucify me so that I would, uh, so that I would uh, experience what Jesus did. And <laughs> now I look back on it and I, I laugh. I'm like, seriously? Like, I, I, they probably wouldn't have even known where to start, to be honest. But... <laughs> uh, 
you, you, you live through these things, and there are so many things. My, my dad was one of the first people to uh, start preaching the gospel, preaching the good news in, in his hometown in Mexico. And he started to expand. He started going to other towns. I remember this one time he organized an event, an outdoor event, a uh, small plaza. We got all the permits. We had everything ready to go. Uh, when it started, um, the people from the town were so against us that they organized themselves and, and they came and when the, when, when the event started, they started throwing rocks at us. Uh, I remember my little brother, or my, one of my older brothers uh, picked me up and took me to the truck um, just so that I wouldn't get hit by a rock. But I just remember going back the next Sunday to our church and uh, hearing about, well, hearing and seeing the bruises on, on some of our church members. Um, and the reason I'm sharing all of this is not to make you feel bad. I, I, don't, I don't want you guys to feel like, oh, man, this guy had it so bad. No, I, I had a great childhood. I, if anything, this just encouraged me more to pursue God. And that's why I'm, I'm still here. Yeah. Um, but the crazy part is that a lot of times, since we here don't experience any of this, we take for granted the freedom that we have in this country to gather in a church such as this with other like-minded believers, worship freely, and we take it for granted because we haven't experienced anything different. I'll, I'll, I'll give you an example. How many here have a washer at home or have access to a washer? Pretty much everyone, right? Um, the reason I'm saying that is because how easy is it for us to do laundry nowadays? Where we say, oh, I'm, I got to do laundry, and really it sounds like a big, tedious chore, but you just throw your clothes in the washer, and how convenient is it that you just pull it out and throw in the dryer that sits right next to your washer, right? And we take it for granted. Can you, can you imagine what your life would be like if you didn't have a washer? Now, like I said, I grew up in Mexico, and that was 20 years ago. It's 20 years ago in Mexico is kind of like 50 years ago here. So... <laughs> I remember uh, we didn't have running water at, at one point in, in our house, and we had to go to a different town and fill up buckets and put them in the back of the truck and take them home, and, and that's how we showered. That's how we had water at home. That's how my mom did the dishes. Uh, but there was a small creek that ran uh, probably one and a half, two miles from our house, and I'm the youngest of six, so we were a house of eight counting my mom and my dad. And I just remember there was a few times where my mom had to carry all of our laundry in a basket and go to that creek just so she could do laundry. Now, she would do that while me and my brothers would jump in the creek and play in the water and stuff. Um, but then my mom had to carry all that wet laundry back home and put it on clothes hangers outside. And I just remember, oh, it's about to rain, and we had to all run outside and <laughs> grab the clothes, pick it up off the clothesline, and run inside with it. Um, but the reason I'm saying that is because we do laundry here, and we throw in the washer, turn on Netflix, and sometimes we forget that we put the clothes in the washer, so we have to wash it again. and. <laughs> We take those things for granted because it's, it's something that we're so used to. And a lot of times as Christians, we take for granted that we have this freedom to come to church and nobody ever makes fun of you, nobody ever bullies you, nobody ever throws rocks at you. I mean, something not so nice would happen to people if they throw rocks at us here at church. Um, but we don't want to go there, so. <laughs> but we take those things for granted because we don't know anything other than what we've experienced. So what I'm trying to say to you today is don't take this for granted. Don't wait till the church gets threatened like we did in 2020 to gain boldness, to gain confidence in the word of God. Don't wait until your kids start getting bullied at school to start to tell them what the truth that's written in the Bible says. Don't wait for that moment. We need to be bold and we need to be confident in the word of God at all times. 
we need to know what the word of God says so that we can have that confidence. But we see here in, in, in Philippians how Paul was imprisoned and everyone knew the truth, including the palace guard. They knew the truth and that's why people were emboldened. So today I'm asking you, do you know the truth? Do you know what the word of God says? Do you know enough to be confident in what the word of God says? If you don't, uh, Tony mentioned to me last week, a good title for the sermon would have been Dinner Without Dinner. Uh, <laughs> pick up your Bible and find out what the word of God says. Uh, we're going to go real quick to Isaiah 520. Everyone find it? All right. Word of God says, What sorrow for those who say that evil is good and good is evil, that dark is light and light is dark, that bitter is sweet and sweet is bitter. The, the reason I, I felt led to um, mention or bring up this verse is because we do live in times where people really don't know the truth. They start calling evil good and we've seen that over and over and we see it more recently um, people don't know what they don't know the difference between up and down and right and left or white and black they don't know the difference and we live in those times right now where people could see silencing the church as something good people could see silencing the truth as something good and the reason we see that is because People don't know what good is. We see in Luke, Luke 18, verse 19, you don't have to go there. It says, G Jesus himself said, only God is truly good. And the reason people don't know good is because they don't know God. We have stopped preaching the message. We have stopped preaching the good news. Therefore, people don't know God. So they don't know what good is. Now, how many of us have had an opportunity at work to share the good news with someone and we say, oh, wait, no, I can't really bring religion into, into my workplace. I can't really speak that around my coworkers or around uh, my friends. And a lot of times it's not because it's not allowed. It's, it's because we, we don't want to be labeled that one Christian person. We don't want to stop getting invited to uh, work gatherings or whatever. So we're like, oh, I'm not, I'm not going to be that religious guy because then I'm not going to get invited anywhere. Um, I didn't even have that on the notes, so if it's, if it's for someone out there, um, you probably know who you are. So, <laughs> But it brings me to my second question. Um, considering we live in times where people don't know God and considering they already try to shut the church down, if they outlawed church, would you still be here? Joshua said, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. So I guarantee you, if they shut this place down, you'd find us out here in the parking lot. Even if we don't have sound system, we grab that guitar, we, grab, we take Angie and we, we give her a megaphone or something. <laughs> We'd make it work. So that's, my quest that's one of my questions today is, if they outlawed, if they shut this place down, would you still pursue the truth? Would you still pursue God? And that's something for you to meditate on because a lot of times at church where, we're surrounded, where, where we are surrounded with people who believe just as we do, it's easy to say, yes, I would be here. But a lot of times when you go back home and think about it, you're like, well, I can't really provide for my family if I'm behind bars and the enemy starts to attack you and bring doubt. Well, I can't really do this if, if, I, if I go to jail. Well, I can't really do this if I'm persecuted. And we see all throughout the Bible, the disciples were persecuted for preaching the good news. We see Paul was imprisoned for preaching the good news. But that did not stop them. Would you allow something like this to stop you? And really think about it. It's, it's, it's really easy for us to say, yes, I would continue to, to pursue God. 
but I've seen it time and time again. Like I said, I grew up in Mexico. I've seen it so many times. We had people come into church. We would, we would go out and evangelize, and then we would bring new people to church. And as soon as that pressure started from their peers or from their family or from their friends, oh, I heard you're going to, to that church with the, with the Christians. Oh, I heard you started, uh, you started uh, believing in God. And people would stop going to church. Simply from the pressure of their family, from the pressure of their friends, from the pressure of their peers, they would, they would say, oh, I don't, I don't want to be labeled that, so I'm just going to stop going. So a lot of times it's easy for us to say here at church, yes, I would continue to pursue God. But how strong are you in your faith? How strong is your foundation to say, I'm going to continue to pursue God even when doubt comes, even when the enemy comes? Would you continue to pursue God if people come after you? So our message today was, um, are you all in? Now, are you all in for the word of God? Are you all in for the truth? Are you willing to stand up for the truth even when trouble comes? Mes Tony, Tony said the message last week should have been dinner without dinner. It's all told me you should uh, title it risk it for the brisket. So <laughs> are you willing to risk it all for the truth? Are you willing to be labeled that one Christian guy that never gets invited to anything because you always preach the gospel to them. You will not lose popularity for preaching the truth. And even if you do, it doesn't matter. I can tell you right now, um, I can tell you right now, And when I was growing up in high school, I did seek that popularity. I was a teenager. So I, I made some bad choices and um, I tried to follow the crowd. Um, I still continue to go to church, so I was, I would, like Pastor says, you know, I, I was, I, I had perfect attendance, but I had a ticket to somewhere not so nice. And the reason I'm saying this is because I seek that, and all the people that I surrounded with, I surrounded myself with, at the time, we thought we were having a good time, but right now, I can't remember the last time I talked to any of them. So you might want the acceptance. You might want the, the, your coworkers to, to, to accept you and to be kind to you and to not talk bad behind your back. And, but I've been at the same job for about three years now, and I love my job. I, I really enjoy it. I'm blessed to have that job. But I can tell you the amount of people that have come in and left within two, three months. So if you're trying to get someone that's not going to be there next year to accept you and to be nice to you it's not worth it so stick to the word of God stick to the truth because popularity and, and, and having a lot of friends it's not really all that important you might want to stand out you might want to be that one person that everyone goes to to seek advice but if you're not preaching the truth that advice is going to go in one ear and go right out the other Unless you invite them to church, unless you preach the gospel to them, that advice is not going to last. So preach them the truth. And even, even if they stop talking to you, you have sowed a seed. So I'll go back to my notes. <laughs> How many of you here have been baptized? All right. How many of you know what that baptism represents? Can I just get someone to just shout it out there? Yeah. Pastor preached about it a couple, couple of weeks ago. Death, burial, and resurrection. Now, here we, we see that the, 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 the disciples, the apostles, were all persecuted. And a lot of them paid a very, very large price, which was their life. Um, and a lot of times we look at it and, and we think, oh, I would, I would give my life for, for the truth. But a lot of times we wouldn't give our flesh up for the truth. We wouldn't give our physical desires up 
to pursue God. We wouldn't allow our flesh to die and be crucified to pursue God. So a lot of times we say, yes, I would be a martyr for Christ. A lot of times we say, yes, I would be imprisoned for, for the truth. But a lot of times we don't want to give up Sunday football to come to church. Or we don't want to give up our sports team or, or, or a concert that's nearby for for coming to church. We don't want to exchange those things for the truth. We don't want to die to our desires to, to pursue the truth. So my question today is after hearing all of this, after knowing the risks, after knowing that you will be persecuted, after knowing that you will be followed, after, after knowing that people are going to come after you for the truth, are you still all in? Yes. Praise God. I've, I've asked that question before in church, and a lot of times you don't get the same reaction as we do here, but that's why I love our church. I know that you guys would be in that parking lot amening with your, with, with your horn, <laughs> your windshield wipers. So praise God. I am, I am beyond blessed to be a part of this church. I, I am so excited to get the opportunity to, to be up here and talk to you guys. I know that my messages aren't very long. Um, <laughs> but I thank God for, for speaking through me. And if this word was for anyone, um, I pray that you continue to pursue the truth, that you continue to build a strong foundation, that you continue to seek God, even when it seems like everything's against you.